Hi everyone, and um, welcome to my video. As you could probably tell with this sh few short seconds that I'm actually uh, I'm not great at making videos, um, but you know, you guys need to know. Um, for those that don't know how to play Bot War, I thought I'd give a video and just sort of show you a little bit on um, the basic principles of it. Um, I won't be able to show you everything that's in the game just because it's it's that would be like a four hour video perhaps. But um, it gives you an idea of sort of how the game works and how the game, um, how the game operates. So I thought I'd firstly start off by going through um, the stat cards because actually you need um, the stat cards to play the game. Um, and basically everything that your, that your models do are actually listed on the stat cards. So you would actually select your stat cards and have them along your table edge when you go to play. So first and foremost, I guess, is if you look at the stats here, we've got the first thing is SR. And so SR means strategy rating. So the higher that number, the, la the later in the, ga in the turn your model will activate. So as you can see here, Nebulous is activation seven. So it goes, it's, it's on a one to 10 scale. So it actually um, activates, he activates quite late in the game. So M is for movement, obviously, seven in inches, seven inches. RA stands for ranged attack, and they roll three purple ranged attack dice. Um, and just importantly on ranged attack, um, you don't get to roll three dice all the time. You, that, this is the number for what we call a short ranged attack, which is uh, 10 inches or under. And over 10 inches, you would roll one less so you'd only roll two. Okay, so then we've got close attack. And of that close attack as well, you actually add a dice. So you actually add a black dice to your close attacks, which is essentially a D3 dice. Uh, and then SH is shields. And these are the shield dice that you would roll to defend against attacks. And then damage is obviously the amount of damage you can take before you're destroyed. And then we have in white here, uh, ram attack um, or combine. This is a super ability that you can only use once per game. And then under that in the black writing, we actually have some special rules. So um, these apply to this particular warrior. And finally, over here we have the amount of energy that your model generates for your team, for your faction. So, uh, and this is the points cost that this model um, is to have it in your faction. So most, most games of bot were about 80 points. Um, so you would work out um, based on your points. Most of you know war games and how it works. Um, on 80 points, for instance, you, you could have up to 80 points and not a point over, unless your opponent decide, uh, agrees, of course. So, um, uh, so that's basically the rundown of the stat card there. So when you have a couple of, let's say you've got a bunch of models, uh, for instance, this group here that I have, they're generating, as you can see here, they're generating a total of five energy for these two, two bots, right? Five energy, okay? So what you can do is when, when you go to distribute them in your force for um, the turn, each turn you distribute your energy in what we call the power-up phase, you actually can distribute across that five across any. So for instance, I might wanna put four on Stingray because Stingray is going to do some extra things this turn but I only need one on Nebulous perhaps. You do have to distribute all of your energy, you can't leave it, uh, I don't know why you would want to leave it um, out but uh, you can't do that but but um, but yeah or you might want to actually just go three and two um, as per normal or you might want to have someone with no energy and put all five on one, and then that means that the, the model with no energy won't be able to actually do anything that turn. But if it's hiding behind a building or something on an objective then you, and you don't need the energy, you can use that model's energy to power up 
um, other attacks from other parts of your force. Okay, so when you, um, and like I said, this is a very quick uh, video, but when you come to um, activate your models, so I would normally run these, my cards from left to right, so I actually activate left to right based on the strategy rating here. So Stingray is activating on a strategy rating four. So if your opponent has uh, um, no th threes or or, or or fours, perhaps in the, in the result of a tie, you would dice off. But um, you would activate, and so like you can get two activations. So you can either you can either move, you can attack, you can a close attack, or you can use a super ability. So you just got to choose two of those in any order. So I can actually move twice if I wanted to, which is movements eight. So I could move sixteen for two. That's two activations and two cubes. So you pay one cube per activation, unless it's a super ability. You pay two. So, for instance, I might say, okay, I've got an enemy model here. I actually want to um, range attack against that enemy enemy model. So I pay my cube for a ranged attack activation, and I roll, because it's under 10 inches, I actually roll my three, three ranged attack dice. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera. <laughs> and I've actually scored a very good roll there of seven. That's an incredibly good roll. Um, so Wolf now, he actually has three shields. So I would roll three shield dice in order to offset some of that damage. I doubt I'll be able to offset any much of that damage or even any of it. And I've offset two of that damage, right? So you just subtract seven minus two equals five, which actually means that Wolf has taken five damage. He's on one damage point left. That's a pretty serious ranged attack. And um, as you can see, this this video is not um, edited, so um, it's pretty raw. So you will see that obviously Wolf's in a bit of trouble now. So actually, um, Stingray has a second activation he can use. Now he can either move, um, or he can use another ranged attack if he wishes to. So he pays his cube for his second ranged attack, um, and he would roll again, and he probably will uh, destroy Wolf in that next roll. However, each time that you roll in short ranged attack, or each any time that you defend with a shield, you can actually elect to boost your dice rolls. So for instance, if Wolf had two cubes on his, I could have actually spent a cube to buy myself an additional shield dive, dice to help defend against that really nasty attack from Stingray. So that means you would roll you would have actually rolled four shield dice against those three dice. So I would actually got five deflected, so I've only would have taken two damage. So but likewise, Stingray declares his boost first. The attacker always declares their boost first. So you can decide as a defender whether you would like to boost or not boost. So there's a lot of the game is centered around how you use and spend your energy, um, whether it's worth it, whether it's not worth it, um, how to, to keep yourself alive, etc. Likewise, terrain takes a big part in bot war, so if if Wolf was behind terrain, he would actually received a terrain dice extra for his shield roll as well. So potentially with the boost, he could have been rolling five shield dice with a black dice. So there's only certain special rules that can ignore terrain, like a flamethrower, but there's definitely ways in bot war to be playing tactically and uh, keep your keep your bots alive. So that's basically how the cubes work 
and um, there obviously is are uh, different nuances within those that those basic rules, um, such as uneasy allies and a few other special rules that 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 tweak um, the way the cubes are distributed, etc. However, that's pretty much the basic mechanic of the activation phase for Bot War. Thank you.